So reactions involving gases. Uh, we've talked about stoichiometry with reactions where we have solids or um, solutions, right? Liquids, volumes, and concentrations. If we have gases as reactants or products, um, we often specify the quantity of gas in terms of the pressure, the volume, and the temperature of the gas. So um, we can use the ideal gas law to determine amounts in moles of gases from their volumes when we know the temperature and the pressure. So we end up using this rearrangement of the ideal gas law um, if we're given a volume and we need to find the number of moles. Or for the end, we'll end up using this one uh, where the volume is nRT over P. And so we'll, we'll do an example of this. Um, when, when the gases are at STP, things get um, simpler because we can use the molar mass of the gas, which is 22.4 liters per mole. Um, sometimes the pressures that are given are going to be partial pressures, and that's, that's fine as well. But here's the general concept. So this is what we are familiar with, grams to moles to moles to grams. That's the basic stoichiometry chant, grams to moles to moles to grams. Um, the two things in the middle, moles of A to moles of B, that's always present in stoichiometry. What's different here is we're going to have pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas and end up with pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas at the end. But the mole-to-mole -mole thing in the middle is the same. Let's do an example. In the following reaction, 4.58 liters of oxygen was formed at uh, a pressure of 745 millimeters of mercury and temperature is equal to 308 Kelvin, how many grams of silver oxide decomposed? So we read through the problem. We're given the balanced chemical equation. I'm going to use that equation to organize these numbers. And then we'll figure out what we need to do. So I'm given a volume of gas, of oxygen gas. So I'm going to write that under oxygen in the uh, balanced chemical equation. 4.58 liters of oxygen. And then they're telling me what the pressure is and what the temperature is. So the pressure is equal to 745 millimeters of mercury. And the temperature is 308 Kelvin. And they were so kind and provided us the temperature in Kelvin so we don't have to mess with it. Yep. At least you'll be honest. What I'm talking about today in lecture is not on the exam. All right. Nothing from lecture this week is on the exam. Nothing. So what is, what's the letter label for 4.58 liters? V. So that's the volume. And then what are they asking? How many grams decomposed? How many grams decomposed? How many grams of? Silver oxide. So question mark grams. Is that like rusty silver? Uh, you could think of it as rusty silver, yeah. It's oxidized silver. Okay, so we've got we've got a lot of information about oxygen and we have a question about silver oxide. The silver itself isn't mentioned at all. Um, so this is a slightly different way of thinking about this problem that just occurred to me yesterday when I was forced to use the chalkboard. So let's try writing the path from the middle and work our way out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this one that I have more information about. So moles of O2 and I'm going to go to moles of silver oxide, Ag2O. In the middle is always moles of something to moles of something else. And the one you're starting with is the one that you've got more information about. And the one that you're going to, the AGT2O, is the one that the question is asked about. So now we need to figure out um, how to get from moles of silver oxide to what the question asks. Well, it's asking for grams. And we know how to convert moles to grams. So we can just tack that on on the end here grams of Ag2O. And at the beginning, we, we need to take this information somehow and get it, moles of oxygen out of it. 
How could we do that? We're going to need the ideal gas law. Now, that's not technically dimensional analysis, right? So um, we've got the pressure, the volume, the temperature of a gas. And from that, we can get to moles of oxygen, but we're going to need to use the ideal gas law. So we're going to need to use an equation first, and then once we get this moles of oxygen, we'll apply dimensional analysis to finish the rest. Okay? There's a lot more space on the chalkboard than there is on this little tiny slide. So I want to find N. So N is PV over RT. And I think we've done enough of these now that we realize we need to check the units here and make sure that all the units are okay. Are all those units good to use? No. The pressure's not the right unit. We need atmospheres. So to convert to atmospheres, it's going to be one atmosphere to 760 millimeters of mercury. So 745 divided by 760. So I'm just going to write that in the equation here. Um, so the pressure is 0 0.980. There's my three sig figs, uh, two six atmospheres. And the volume was given 4.58 liters. R is a constant, 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin and the temperature in Kelvin is 308. So we do the math um, 0 0.98026 times 4.58 divided by 0 0.08206 divided by 308. This is not a final answer, so I don't want to round off to three significant figures, but I'm going to keep track of them. I've got 6,3, and that is moles of oxygen. Everybody with me? So I used the ideal gas law to find the moles of oxygen. That's this guy right here. Now, I'm going to take moles of oxygen and go to moles of silver oxide to grams of silver oxide. So, moles of Ag2O and grams of Ag2O. So, moles down here and down here is moles of oxygen. The mole ratio comes from the balanced chemical equation. For every two moles of silver oxide, I get one mole of oxygen gas. So this is a ratio of two to one. And then I need the molar mass of Ag2O. So 107.9 times two plus the mass of oxygen is 16. I get 231.8. So this is 231.8 grams. 0.17763 times 2 times 231.8. Mass of silver oxide that decomposed is the final answer. I'm going to put it in a different place. So I can round and I'm going to end up with 82.3 grams. Any questions? So in this example, um, we started the calculation with a gas, and we ended with mass. You might end up finishing with a gas as well, or you could start with mass and end up with a gas, or you could start with a concentration and a volume and end up with a gas. There's like an infinite number of problems that we could throw at you. Yes? Uh, just to make sure, like, what if I guess... Controller sit the whole time and then 
Yeah, these, these numbers that we started out with here, the volume, the pressure, and the temperature, they all had three significant figures. It's the author of this textbook, the way the problems are written, they usually end up having three significant figures. Um, and so, you know, if, if significant figures just make absolutely no sense to you, um, you know, you can just kind of guess that way. The, the problem is, like in lab, where we're, you know, doing things that are not all set up for us, that sometimes we end up with different numbers. Any other questions? Let's do another one. This one's at STP. How many liters of oxygen at STP are required to form 10.5 grams of water? Well, here's our balanced chemical equation, and let's use it. Um, 10.5 grams of water, I'm going to write that under water in the equation there. And then the question is, how many liters of oxygen? So question mark liters under the oxygen, and this is at STP. Anytime you see at STP, you should think, hey, I could use the molar volume of a gas, right? Because at STP, we've got 22.4 liters per mole. And so that's a very handy conversion factor. Now, if you forgot the 22.4, if you forgot that number, could you use the ideal gas law in conjunction with this information? You could, because STP tells you the temperature and the pressure. So it might take a little bit longer, but you can still get there. So let, let's start this one from the middle. Um, I've got oxygen and I've got water. Which one am I going to put first, moles of water or moles of oxygen? More information about the water, so. I have more about the water. So I'm going, to, I'm going to have moles of water, and I'm going to go to moles of oxygen. Yes? Wait. Temperature STP? Um, the Kelvin temperature at STP is 273.15. It's zero degrees Celsius. I think, like, freezing ocean, right? Atmospheric pressure, one atmosphere, and zero degrees. So here we're starting with a, we've got a mass of, of water, and so our beginning is going to be grams of H2O to moles of H2O. And that's like the regular grams to moles to moles. But then the ending is going to be a little different. We want liters of oxygen at the end. If it was not at STP, we would need to use the ideal gas law, and we'd have to be given the pressure and the temperature as well. Because it's at STP, we can do this conversion using the molar mass of gas. So we don't need an equation for this one. 10.5 grams of water. And we're going to moles of water. And then moles of oxygen. And then liters of oxygen. You figure out the path. And if you understand dimensional analysis, all you have to do then is put the units in and then find the numbers. So I want moles of oxygen down here so the units cancel. I want moles of water down here so the units cancel. And I want grams of water down here so the units cancel. So I need the molar mass of water. Well, you can calculate that. It's 18.016. <clears throat> moles of oxygen to moles of water. Well, the equation tells us that for every one mole of oxygen, we make two moles of water. So this is one to two. And then at the end here, this is our new one, liters to moles. We can only do this at STP. It's 22.4 liters is one mole of oxygen. 
10.5 divided by 18.016 divided by 2 times 22.4. And um, this ends up also having three significant figures, 6.53 liters of oxygen. Questions? I got uh, 6.53.